by Fogel. Chapter 8. J. Have you seen this? Kevin demanded, as he practically shoved a newspaper into my face. What? Did somebody get traded? Steve asked as he reached for the paper. No, not the sports section. This. I took the paper from his hand. It was today's paper, and he had it folded open to one of the four or five pages that were devoted to the arrest of the terrorists. I'd read some of the stories. I'd read everything yesterday and watched the entire news on TV, but it seemed like there were no new arrests or anything different to report. The papers and newscasters were just spinning the same story, like they had to report it but had nothing new to report. Like writing an essay when you don't really know what you're talking about. Look, right here, Kevin said, stabbing the paper with his finger. There was a little sidebar article underneath the picture of three people, teenagers, brown teenagers. The heading said, Understands why they did it. I scanned down the column of print. It was an interview with some Muslim teenagers. They were saying that they were surprised by the arrest and thought those people who were arrested were innocent. Let me read it to you, Kevin said, practically ripping the paper from my hands. It's right here. Hussein Maltar, 17, says, I know one of them, and I know that he is a good Muslim and therefore not guilty of the charges. His arrest is the result of persecution of Muslims by the police and government, and he would have been subject to prejudice and inhumane treatment that all Muslims receive at school from whites. Haven't I been saying the same thing, Steve said? Those whites are the devils. Shut up, Steve. As far as he concerned, you're white too. Steve held his hand up, turned it over slowly, staring at it. I beg to differ. I'm pretty sure I'm black. Half Swedish black. You're no different than me or Jay or an albino, Kevin said. He ran his finger down the page, trying to find his place. Here it is. All non-Muslims are racist, and Muslims are the target of discrimination based on our faith. White students at my school treat the Muslims badly and exclude them from school life. I am not liked or accepted because of my religion. Maybe he isn't liked because he's a jerk, Steve said. You got that right, Kevin scowled. Now get this. I do not believe in bombs, but I understand why it might be necessary to build a bomb or have weapons to defend the faith against the aggression of infidels. Kevin paused. And here's the kicker. It says right here that the kid goes to Central Secondary School. He goes to our school, Steve said. Kevin nodded and his scowl grew. Bad enough we have a terrorist going to the school without some yahoo defending him and telling the world that's all our fault. It's stupid, I agreed. But there's not much he can do about it. Oh, yeah? Come with me. Kevin turned and started walking away. Steve fell in behind him. I didn't know what he was going to do, but I knew there would be some action, and I wanted to see it in person instead of hear about it. I trotted down the hall and fell into step beside him. Where are we going? I'm not going to let any sand monkey go around insulting our school, he added loudly. I looked around to see if any sand monkeys had heard him. Nothing. Nobody. No reaction. Keep in mind, a fight could get you suspended, Steve said. I'm just going to use my words. Nothing wrong with talking, he said. All depends on what you're going to say, Steve said. Not much. I'm just going to tell him to keep his mouth shut. What are you going to do if he doesn't want to shut up, Steve asked. He'll shut up. We steamed through the hall. I knew we were heading to one of two places, either the Brown Corridor or Brown Town. As we walked, we passed other guys from the football team. Kevin and Steve invited them to join in. Soon there were six, then seven, then ten guys walking together. I was safely sealed off in the center of the pack. That's what it felt like. A pack. With each new addition, it seemed like we were walking faster, that we had more power, more strength. Kids in the hall just flattened themselves against the lockers and got out of our way. It was a rush. What would Hussein say? How would he react when Kevin came up to him and wanted to talk? Would this end up in a brawl between us and a bunch of brown guys? No. When Kevin started talking, it was more likely the kid would wet his pants than fight, or he might pull out a weapon. That last thought made me hesitate for half a step. They said on the news that they were still looking for more suspects, and this kid did get quoted as saying he understood why people needed to carry weapons. What if he had a knife or a gun? Kevin came to a halt, and the line behind stopped. We were standing in the brown corridor. There were kids at their lockers, or standing in little clusters and talking. At first, they didn't notice us. Then, little by little, the noise level died down and stopped completely. The brown kids all stood there, staring at us, or trying hard not to stare. "'I'm looking for my good friend, Hussein Maltar,' Kevin yelled out. "'I'm hoping he could sign my newspaper,' he held it off. "'Sort of an autograph.' Nobody said anything.' 
Has anybody seen him today? Kevin demanded. There was silence, and then Zanna stepped forward. He's not here, she said. Her voice was calm and clear, and she stared straight at Kevin. I had to hand it to her. If I hadn't been standing with the pack, there was no way I'd be standing up to it. If I were brown, I would have tried to make myself unseen and unheard. Do you know where he is? Kevin snapped. He didn't come to school today, she said. Smart move after saying stupid things like this, Kevin said, holding up the newspaper. If you're going to insult somebody, you should at least have the guts to say it to their face, or at least show up to back up your own words. Anybody here have anything they want to say to me? I thought for a split second that Zanna might say something. I was glad when she didn't. There was complete silence. The few eyes that had been looking our way were all averted, suddenly finding the lockers on the floor much more interesting. I couldn't blame them. I wouldn't have wanted to fight Kevin, especially not when he was standing at the front of what looked like a mob. I want everybody to pass on to good old Hussein that I'm going to be looking for him when he returns to school. Kevin turned and walked back through the pack. We stepped aside as he passed and then joined in, letting him lead the way. Excuse the interruption, came the voice over the PA. Could the members of the football team please report to Jim 2 for a short team meeting? I knew that every eye was on me as I stood up. It felt good. Being a football player at this school was something special. Occasionally we got called down to the gym for special meetings, or sometimes we'd leave early for an away game. I didn't care what it was for. I was just grateful to be getting out of class. The halls were empty except for other members of the team. Coach Pruitt was probably going to give us another one of his speeches. He'd be all hyped up and try to get us hyped up as well. Not because he thought we were in danger of losing, but because he wanted us to kill the other team. If only his voice didn't sound like he was sucking helium, those speeches might have worked better. I filed into the gym. It was already half-filled with more guys coming in from different doors. We all gave high fives, tapped hands, or just nodded our greetings. It was a pretty good bunch of guys. Can everybody please take a seat in the bleachers? It was Principal Atkins. Standing beside him were both vice principals, Miss Willis and Mr. Spence. Had something happened to Coach? I'd been wondering if he was going to give himself a coronary over all of these games. We're going to keep this short, Mr. Atkins said. I've had some disturbing reports about an altercation in the back hall this morning. My heart rose up into my throat and then sank back down to the pit of my stomach. I had been told the members of the football team gathered in the back hall and were intimidating other students. There was a bit of grumbling from the bleachers. Beside the bench of us who had been there, almost everybody else had heard about it. The reports are that a student, a Muslim student, was targeted by members of the football team. Nobody targeted anybody, Kevin said. I was there. You were more than simply there, the principal said. According to the reports, you were the spokesperson for the group. I was talking, but it wasn't like the whole football team or anything, he said, gesturing to the team in the bleachers. It was just me and a couple of guys who wandered over to the back corridor. I wanted to talk to Hussein. Is Hussein a friend of yours? Wouldn't know him if he bit me. I wanted to meet him, talk to him about things he said in the paper, to tell him he was wrong, to find out why he thinks he doesn't belong. No prejudice here on the football team, Kevin said. Look around. There were lots of black faces to go along with the white ones, two brown kids, Moose and Allie, and one Chinese kid. Nobody threatened anybody, Kevin said. And you don't think that simply asking to speak to him couldn't be taken as intimidation, the principal asked? I can't tell you what anybody's thinking, Kevin said, but nobody threatened anybody. I just wanted to talk. Talking is good. In fact, I wish there could be more dialogue about this whole thing. What I need is for members of this team to take a leadership role in helping to keep things calm and orderly and normal around the school. He paused. So I'm going to ask that members of the team refrain from assembling in the hall by the shop classes. I would ask that the Muslim prayer room be respected. Kevin put up his hand. How about Moose? Can he go to the prayer room? Of course. Moose is a Muslim. And a member of the football team? Kevin said. Anybody can try out for the football team. There's no prejudice on who gets picked or how they're treated. Kevin turned to Moose. Right, Mustafa? No complaints for me. But I'm okay about not going to the prayer room if it would help. No, that won't be necessary, the principal said. I'm just trying to keep the school running without incident. We're trying to avoid anything that might be misinterpreted. So do you want us not to talk to anybody who's brown? Steve asked. Talking is fine but please avoid topics that might be contentious or potentially explosive. I didn't think that explosive was the best choice of words. Kevin put up his hand. 
Yes, Kevin, he said. There was a tone in his voice like he was just hoping that Kevin would shut up. So I guess it would be really bad for people to make statements like, all Muslims are bad, right? That goes without saying. How about a statement like, all whites and non-Muslims are racist, Kevin asked. The principal suddenly realized where Kevin was going with this question. Or how about somebody saying it was okay to carry weapons to defend themselves, you know, because all whites are racist, or maybe to defend the Muslim faith? Wouldn't that be, you know, contentious or potentially explosive? There was a ripple of conversation as different people all at once realized what Kevin was saying. Clever. All those who say anything that even hints at intolerance or racism will be punished. So has Hussein been punished? Kevin asked. We are not here to discuss our reaction to the newspaper article, he said. We are here to discuss any other reactions. If there are incidents, we will be taking clear and decisive actions, including suspensions and, if necessary, expulsion. For everybody, Kevin asked. Everybody. Christian, Muslim, Jewish, even captains of the football team. Does that answer your question? Completely, Kevin said. And you can count on our help in the following those rules. Kevin turned to face the team. Right, everybody? Everybody shouted in agreement. This was good. Much better than what could have happened if Kevin had found Hussein.